G'day. Uh, welcome to Glass Box. My name's Drew, and today I'll be treating my tank for Blackbeard Algae. Black Death. I've inherited uh, Blackbeard Algae when I bought the tank. Uh, I think it was in the wood or the substrate. And um, due to inconsistent CO2 levels, um, too long a duration of lighting, uh, and other factors, uh, I felt that it, it got a little bit more established than uh, I would have liked. So today I'll take you through uh, how I treat it and how I'm getting on top of it, which I really feel that I am. So um, the main thing that I use is um, hydrogen peroxide, which is just uh, 3%, which you can just buy at your normal shopping center. Um, the good thing about hydrogen peroxide is as soon as it hits the water, it turns to oxygen and water. So um, there is a, yeah, a good chance that it won't hurt anything. So, uh, and, and it totally destroys the BBA, it turns it pink and then the shrimp come up and have a bit of a feed on it and all those type of things. Um, I also use Flourish XL. Flourish XL is a great way to uh, use the liquid carbon to melt the BBA. Um, you've got to be careful not to overdose this. Um, you can actually put too much in, but read the directions and follow that. Some people do double dosing. Uh, I've been a little bit more cautious and haven't actually um, put that much in. Um, but it is making a huge difference and, and keeping the BBA in, in control. Uh, another thing would be to uh, manually remove any leaves that you see the BBA growing on. Now I've got plenty of Anubias in that tank uh, and you can see that the slower growing plants are the ones that actually are getting the BBA. Now when I'm applying the uh, H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide um, I've modified a spray bottle. I've, all I've done is I've drilled out the tip with uh, um, a drill bit that's just slightly smaller than the airline hose and this allows me to get my hand into the tank and directly apply the uh, hydrogen peroxide to the areas uh, that, I, that I need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my pumps off. Um, I'll get some vision of me actually treating this main part of the wood where, where I've got um, that. I'll go through and remove some leaves where it's um, growing a little bit of the algae and uh, dose some of the Flourish XL but it's massively reduced from what it was so if you follow these techniques I'm sure that you'll be able to get on top of it without having to break down your tank and start again so let's have a look okay so first of all I'm going to unplug my canister filter and I'm going to unplug both of my uh, wave makers that I've got within the tank that'll uh, stop the spread where I, I don't want the actual H2O2 to uh, you know go to so let me just get this little spray bottle and then I'll uh, start to administer so normally what I do is I just make sure that all the shrimp and everything uh, are out of the way and I'll start to apply you can see it come down the airline hose so once it actually gets to the end, it's coming to the end now. I'll then just apply it to the wood and you can see it come out. I'll get some close up vision of it actually uh, working on the BBA itself, but you can see that it actually um, uh, starts to bubble up quite vigorously and that's it turning to oxygen. So. There's a couple of snails there, so they're not really liking it. So I do think that it can affect your livestock, so I like to move them out of the way before applying any of this stuff. And I'd hate to um, cook anything. Uh, how do you like that? Uh, my head out of frame. So yeah, I've just applied a good portion to it. You can see I'm uh, slowly pumping the, the, the pack. And there's some down here on this wood here, so I'll apply that there. And then I'll do a water change. So what I'll do is um, just spray the leaves just to, you know, 
try and get on top of the areas that I can see where there is some starting to take hold, especially on my wave makers. Um, and then there's this rock area down here, so I'll try and put some in there. And then I'll take some vision of it actually fizzing up. You can see that it actually turns white and uh, starts to bubble up a fair bit. Now, it's not really working as well on the rock that it does on the wood. It seems to work really well on the wood and it's reduced heaps from me doing this technique. I'm just touching a bit of the leaves, but I'll probably end up manually removing these leaves. Um, and I think that'll do. So normally what I do is now that the pipe is all filled up, I'll put the tip of the pipe back in the bottle, lift the spray out and just spray all the stuff back in the bottle. And then pop it all back together. So I'll let that do its business for a little bit. Let me take some uh, footage of it actually fizzing up. Let's uh, have a look here. So you can see the uh, H2O2 fizzing away there. And there's a section down there on the wood. It's nearly totally clear from me um, doing this every week. And once it's had a good chance to work its way within that, I'll do a uh, normal water change. You know, I do a 40% water change. There's lots of little bubbles that you can see that the oxygen uh, from the H2O2. So O2 is oxygen if you don't know your chemistry. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel that that's uh, probably the best way to get on top of this stuff. Uh, it can be quite stubborn can be quite hard to remove but uh, using this technique and making sure that your uh, CO2 injection is stable that you've limit your lighting period a little bit under what they recommend mine's on five hours so I think that's actually helping me get on top of things and you can see that all the fish are happy it's not affecting any of the livestock uh, after a little bit of time you'll see all the shrimp come up and wanting to start picking at all that dead BBA um, and yeah let me just uh, I'll remove some leaves and uh, then I'll start doing my water change okay so now I'm going to manually remove a couple of the leaves that I can see that is starting to get the BBA growing on top of it so I'm just manually snipping off and just chuck them in the bucket uh, get it all in the compost and I'll just have a look around just to see if there's anything a couple of crypts down the front that are a little bit covered all in all it's not too bad now I should have done this last week but I've left it a week You really need to be quite regimented to be able to make sure that you do get on top of this stuff because it can be quite it's always sad to chop off these large Anubias but it's going to do no good for it so off it goes. A bit of needle leaf there with it. Gets me a chance to address anything and have a look. I'm sure you can hear my dog snoring in the background. Hopefully you guys aren't snoring in the background and finding this handy. Um, so I'm nearly done. Just removing some 
tufty parts that are over here on my needle leaf. I'll just give that a good snip. And the good thing is that it does grow back really quickly. All of my plants are quite healthy. I'm very, very pleased with the amount of growth that I'm getting on the tank now. Just that uh, it'd be nice not to have the BBA covering all these beautiful plants. But if I keep this thing up, I'm sure that I'll get on top of it and I'll update you guys. Uh, once I've done my water change, I'll uh, show you how far I take it down. So hang in there and uh, I'll do a little time lapse of me changing the water. Righto, so here's my little trusty watering can. I know it's not very big, but uh, it doesn't take me too long to get around and do all the plants. Just got a cloth to wipe off the bottom. And I also use a, um, a little uh, moisture meter and just so I don't overwater my plants because I have been actually uh, overwatering my plants. Let me just turn that guy down a bit so it's not shooting in your face. So I try and take a, a little bit off the top, get all the trimmings and things off there. And then I run off and I'll water my plants. So there's some shrimp that have moved onto the area that I've treated now and they're uh, starting to feed on the broken down BBA. Um, so yeah, it's doing its thing. That's all the indoor plants. Now I use a larger container and I go around and I do a few garden beds and I do a few uh, of my large potted plants that I've got outside. So here we go with this one. Always make sure I don't grab any fish or shrimp when I do my jugs. So there we have it. I finished the initial water change. Uh, it stirred a few things up. Let's just put the pumps back on. There's the main canister filter. Got the left and right pump. Now the one thing with these wave makers is sometimes the, uh, the impeller goes backwards. So I just like to, you can see on this one, I stop it and start it again. It seems to go the way in which it should. It's good that it's stirred up all of that detritus so that'll get sucked into the canister filter and do its job there. Uh, I will d dose my fertilizer so I do two capfuls of this. There's one. There's two. I'm nearly out of this stuff, but and then I do two capfuls of my Flourish XL. Now some people overdose. It does say a capful per 20 litres. That's probably five capfuls that I should be doing. Um, but I just wanted to rather be on the safe side for that. So that's what I'm doing. Maybe I will step it up if I really want to knock it on the head. But yeah, that's my uh, treatment of blackbeard algae. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, see you again soon.